Hello, my fellow musicians on a mission here today to take you through mixing bass and how you can use the pocket EQ technique to mix your bass guitars in under a minute, but make sure they sound tight and they sound full and they don't cloud up the mix and make that low end sound muddy because that's really what we're striving for. A nice, clear, tight low end where the bass is interacting nicely with the kick. So keep watching if you want to mix bass like a pro. And if you really want to take your bass guitars to the next level, make sure you download the cheat sheet. There's a link in the description below. It's completely free. And inside there, you're gonna find more tips for recording and mixing bass. And that's gonna help you to get it right every single time you dive in to mix that bass guitar. So let's jump right in now to the pocket EQ technique. Have you ever finished mixing a track and you listen back maybe in your car or on a bigger stereo system and suddenly the low end sounds boomy and out of control. There's no clarity there. It's either overpowering or sometimes you have the opposite. You export your track, you listen to it elsewhere and it sounds weak. There's no power in the low end. Low end is so important. And a big factor in getting that right is EQ. And when you EQ the bass right and get the relationship right with the kick, everything else will fall into place. But before we talk specifically about EQ, I want to talk to you a bit more about what becomes before that stage because there's so many other vital things here. Key point number one is that you need to get the tone that you want before you start mixing. And that's crucial. Even if you're working with DI'd bass, even if you're working with a recorded amp, it doesn't matter. Try and get the tone you want earlier before you start thinking about EQ, before you start thinking about getting the relationship right between the kick and the bass because the tone that you capture in the recording phase or the tone that you create when you're playing with amp simulation, you want that to be pretty much 90% to 100% of the way there. Your aim with this is to use as little EQ as possible. Use the EQ knobs on the amp, use the EQ knobs on amp simulation, on the software if you're doing that, to get the right tone. And then when it comes to EQ, your job is gonna be so much easier. So make sure you get a good sound before you get to this point where you're starting to focus on smaller details like EQ. Key point number two, is that volume balancing is absolutely crucial here. Don't start diving into an EQ and cutting the low end or boosting the low end uh, on the bass itself or even on the mix bus because you feel it's lacking when that could be fixed with just turning the bass guitar up a bit or turning the bass guitar down a bit. And getting the relationship right between the kick and the bass mostly comes down to balancing as well. So you really wanna make sure you spend plenty of time on that first. So now, considering those two key points, we can move on to the EQ phase. And generally this will be after you've got a good balanced mix going, you've got your static mix, maybe you've addressed the most important things like the vocals uh, and the kick drum first perhaps, and now it's time to actually zoom in a layer. You've got a, a good overall picture going and now you're zooming in a layer to focus on the deeper relationship between the kick and the bass and the bass and the rest of the track. So this is when we start to think about EQ and this is when we can bring in that pocket EQ technique for mixing bass. Now the idea behind this is that you wanna create a nice pocket for the bass within the mix and it's really that simple. If you imagine a nice section of the frequency spectrum, a section of the mix that's just allocated to bass. And this is an extension of range allocation. If you wanna learn more about that in a wider context for mixing in general, just search on YouTube for range allocation and the video that comes up there will help you to dive into that more. But today we're talking specifically about bass guitar and how you can create a pocket for that in the mix. And as soon as you approach it in this way, it's gonna solve the relationship between the kick and the bass, which is what a lot of people struggle with. It's gonna make sure that your tracks don't sound too muddy and too powerful in the low end, but it's also gonna make sure your tracks don't sound thin and lifeless because you haven't allocated a good section for the bass. So that's what we're focusing on here is creating a pocket of the mix, a pocket of the frequency spectrum for the bass. So how do you do that? Well, there are five simple steps that you need to follow. Step number one, is to find the pocket. So before we dive in and start just playing around with an EQ, we've got to go through a process of actually figuring out what the pocket for the bass is gonna be. Where is that gonna be in the frequency spectrum? And this is gonna come down to several things. First of all, it's gonna come down to which has priority in the low end, the kick or the bass guitar. Because both of them can't sit in the same space. If you try and make the kick and the bass 
live in the same space of the mix they're going to be constantly fighting each other they're not going to have a good relationship but if they each have their own little space or one has the priority overall which is important then that's going to make your low end sound much clearer more defined and less muddy now whether the bass guitar has the priority or not is going to vary depending to the genre if it's something like hip-hop a lot of electronic music a lot of mainstream music now as well then the kick is probably going to have priority over the bass. So the kick will be taking up a lot more of the low end and instead the bass sits a bit higher. Maybe the kick is taking care of all the sub bass, all the low end in the track. And then the bass is sitting higher, maybe between 100 and 200 hertz. So in that case, the kick has got the priority in the sub bass, in the low end as it were. Whereas in rock music, in a lot of punk music, a lot of hardcore metal music, it's the other way around. Instead the bass takes care of that sub frequency content the bass provides that constant low end and then the kick has got more of an attack to it and it doesn't have as much low end instead it's more about the attack of the kick and the click of the kick drum if you imagine a, a metal kick drum it's got a really high pitch it's not about the big boominess that you'd expect from hip-hop so that's one thing it depends on the genre some genres the bass will have priority in the low end and everything below 100 hertz in other genres the kick will have priorities. And if you're not sure which should have priority, listen to some references, listen to some tracks in that genre that sound good, and then just take note, observe what's going on in that low end. Now, one more thing you can do to try and find the pocket for the bass is to just look at what you're working with. Because if you've got a kick drum that's already got lots of presence in the low end, and you've got a bass guitar that's got lots of presence in you know, lower mids or nearer 200 hertz, then it already makes sense that instead the kick drum takes up that space below 100 hertz and the bass guitar takes up the space between 100 and 200 hertz, for example. So depending on the, the tone that you've already got or the samples that are being used, the track may have already dictated where each part's gonna sit. So let's actually take a look at how this can be applied in a mix. So we've got a track here, I've got the bass guitar on the left and the kick on the right. And before we talk about these frequency curves, first of all, let's just take a look at what's going on because this has got a built-in spectrum analyzer and this is really helpful. You can hear this as well. You don't need to use a spectrum analyzer. If you can do it with your ears, that's much better. But what I want you to do is I'm gonna solo the kick and just listen to this, look at the spectrum analyzer and try and guess where this kick is sitting in the frequency spectrum. So it's pretty obvious, right? We can hear that it's pretty sub heavy. It's got lots of energy below 100 hertz. And we can clearly see from the frequency analyzer that there's a lot going on around 50 to 60 hertz. Now let's take a look at the bass instead. So a slightly different picture here. You can already hear that there's a lot more energy in the lower mids and that's because I've got a boost there that I'm going to talk about later but you can also clearly see that although there is energy around 50 60 hertz that's actually just the fundamental notes that are being played watch this you'll see it change so this peak down here that's just the note that's being played so there is energy there but there's far more energy in the kick drum there. So it already is clear from this track, it's clear from the genre as well, I think, that in this case, the kick drum has got priority in that, you know, 20 to 100 hertz area, which is quite broad, but we can give it that whole spectrum. Whereas the bass guitar has got a lot more energy between 100 and 200 hertz. So I can see that already from the tone that we've got from the recording, from the sample in this case of the kick drum, that we have a clear pocket here for the bass. We don't want the pocket to be around 50 hertz because that's where the kick drum's sitting. Instead, we want it to be maybe between 100 and 200. Now, the other factor here is the style and the references. So take a quick listen to this reference track that was sent to me by this client. Don't let go in this tough season because the rain falls, so listen. I'm speaking from experience. So 
hopefully you can hear it there. The bass guitar actually had a lot more energy in the low mids. It had this kind of like really almost like nasally tone to it. But that was a really nice pocket for it in the mix. And that's around 170 hertz. That's why I boosted it so much, which I'm talking about in a second. So there we have the pocket. We found it according to the genre, according to the tones that we've got. We've got a clear area where we can give the bass priority. So that's step number one. Step number two is to then high pass filter the bass guitar. And you might not think this. It might seem like this is the complete opposite of what you'd want to do. Why would you want to get rid of the low end on a bass guitar? Well, when you're mixing bass and specifically when you're thinking about bass EQ, you need to consider that we don't actually want that frequency content because the energy there is being all taken up by the kick drum. So we don't actually need a lot of energy around 60 hertz. The kick is providing that. And below that, we definitely don't want to. In fact, what we can do by engaging a high pass filter is actually tighten up the low end quite a lot. Let's bypass that. Listen to it without the high pass filter. Let's bring that in. Bypass. Bring that back in. So it actually really tightens up that bass quite a lot. It gives it a, a lot more energy in the lower mids. It rounds it out a bit. We lose some of that flabbiness and bottom end that we don't really need. So that's step number two is actually to apply a high pass filter. If the bass guitar has got priority in the low end, if the bass guitar is providing you know, all the content around 50 hertz, then you can still try doing this at 20 or 30 hertz just to tighten it up. But this is more applicable when instead the bass guitar is sitting a bit higher up. But that's step number two. Step number three is to then exaggerate the pocket. And you might not need to do this, depending on the tone of the bass, maybe it's already got lots of energy around where you want it to sit. So if you decide that you want the bass guitar to sit at around 170 hertz, which is what I found for this track, it might already have loads of content there. It might already have a tone that sits there perfectly. With this bass guitar, it didn't. I had to boost it quite a lot to get it, first of all, to sit in that pocket, to really own that space, and also to get that nasal quality, that kind of that element of the tone <laughs> that I wanted. So I had to boost it quite a lot, 6 dB. You might not need to do that, but if you need to boost it there to get that presence, to really make it own that area of the frequency spectrum, don't be afraid to do it. And make sure you do this uh, in the context of the mix. All of this, try and do it not in solo. So this is without that boost. In times I pray, but my prayers weren't answered right away. I mean, first of all, it gets lost because there's not a lot of mid-range content in this tone. Now let's bring that in. In times I pray, but my prayers weren't answered right away. And it seems I So it really fills that space when you bring that boost in, makes the bass own that pocket and you wanna put it right in that pocket. And sometimes you'll need a boost to make it sit there. Sometimes you'll need cuts to shape the tone a bit more so that it's more present there. But that's step number three, make it really own that pocket and bring it out. And then step number four is to remove all the stuff you don't need. So we've already you know, tightened up the low end with that high pass filter, but now we can remove some of the top end that we don't need. It's just filling out space in the mix. We don't really need it. So I've got a, a low pass filter there just to cut off the top end. Uh, and then a bit of a dip here, again around 60 hertz because that's where the kick is sitting. So we're making a bit of room for the kick there. Sometimes as well, quite often I'll end up cutting the bass around 400 to 600 hertz, maybe a bit lower, 300. If it's adding a bit of mud to the mix, it's not really helping it. Um, instead, I'll cut there. So step number four is to then remove anything that's not needed. And then finally, step number five is to make space in the room for that bass guitar, create the pocket for that bass. Now that we've really got the tone going on the bass guitar, we can now address other things like the kick drum. We can address uh, maybe guitars. Maybe um, there's a keyboard part with the left hand is kind of interrupting with that bass. If it's a male vocal even, that could be conflicting with the bass if they're singing quite low. So create more space in the mix for that pocket. Create that pocket for the bass to sit in. And just a really quick, clear example here, you can see on the kick, what I've done is just cut 180 hertz, which is about the same, 174, 
um, by a couple of dB. And that's enough just to give it that space, make sure the kick and the bass aren't fighting. They've each got their own little allocated area. The bass has got its pocket, it's sitting there nicely. So that's it. Just to recap now, the pocket EQ technique for mixing bass. Before you go into this, remember those two key steps which were to get the tone that you want before you start mixing or at least you know play around with amp simulation before you start to think about this more critical form of EQ and then key thing number two was to address balancing before you reach for EQ make sure you've got a really good volume balance going between the bass and the rest of the track and the bass and the kick are working well together and once you've got those two things down you can move on to the pocket EQ technique which is step one find the pocket step two high pass filter to tighten up that bass step three enhance the bass in that pocket whether that means boosting the bass guitar in that frequency area or cutting around it to kind of sculpt it and really mold it into that area number four was then removing any unnecessary frequencies that are just clogging up the rest of the mix like muddiness or top end that's not needed and then number five was to create even more space in the mix for that bass. Once you found that pocket, create space, create that pocket by cutting that in other parts. So if you enjoyed this video, you're gonna absolutely love the cheat sheet. There's a link in the description below and inside that I'm gonna go through even more uh, when it comes to bass, recording, mixing, everything. It's a cheat sheet you can just reference every time you're working with bass guitar and that's gonna help you to get it right absolutely every time. So make sure you grab that. But besides that, like this video if you found it helpful, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you again soon.